Microsoft Active Directory, in all its variations, can be considered one of the most widely used identity and access management services by businesses today. It is a critical foundational component for companies adopting Microsoft services and solutions both on-prem and in the cloud. In this video, we're going to explore how managed service providers or MSPs and businesses can take advantage of their existing users and groups created in Active Directory to create a powerful and robust policy-based web filtering and application control solution through integration with Zenarmor, which provides granular control over which applications and web traffic is allowed to traverse the network. Let's get started. Before we continue, this is just a quick message from this video's sponsor, Zenarmor. If you're looking for a very capable next generation firewall solution with plenty of versatile deployment options, best in class threat intelligence, and easy to manage via the Zen console dashboard, go check out their website and previous videos that I've created showcasing this product. No matter if you are an MSP, an enterprise, a small business, or a home user, Zen Armor can offer you almost instant security enhancements wherever you need it, in the cloud or on-prem. For this demonstration, I've modeled the scenario around a school campus network. However, schools and business networks share an almost identical design, so a solution like this can be adapted and scaled easily to fit your unique requirements. I have set up an OpenSense firewall that has Zenarmor installed and registered with Zen Console, the cloud-based dashboard. And in addition to this, we have a Windows server that has been set up as an Active Directory domain controller. And finally, I set up a Windows 11 machine joined to that domain, which we will use for testing purposes. Okay, so to start, we have logged into our Windows server. I just want to show you on the left over here, we have Active Directory users and, and computers, and we have set up a lab.local domain for Active Directory. And then just below, we have a staff and students group, and then we have a couple of staff and student users, which I've created. And each of those users have been joined into their respective groups. So the next part of the installation is we need to install Zenarmor's Active Directory agent. So to do this, you're going to head over to their website, download the agent. I'll put a link in the description, and then you're going to be installing it like you would install any application on a Windows machine. Simply click on the, on the setup, follow the prompts, and it'll install the agent for you. And then once the agent is installed, you'll see like I have on the right, this is the interface uh, for the agent application, the Active Directory agent application. And we have a couple of options here, like where we can choose our platform if we're using OpenSense or if we're using one of the other platforms that Zenarmor is supported on, like, uh, like FreeBSD or uh, other Linux platforms. And it's pretty straightforward to configure this. The next step, we're going to head over to our OpenSense firewall, and I'm going to show you how to set up the API token. So let's head over there quickly. Okay, so we are connected to our OpenSense dashboard. Uh, you're going to head over to Zenarmor and to configurations. And then under the general tab, you'll just scroll down to the section that mentions AD agent authentication tokens. And you're simply going to just generate a new token like I've done. You can see I have a, a token that's already existing. And then just copy this token because we're going to need it in the next step of the installation when we head back to our Windows server. Okay, so we back on our Windows server. We need to configure Zenarmor Active Directory Agent for OpenSense. To do this, you're simply going to be putting in your IP address of your of your OpenSense firewall under the host IP section. So in this case, it's just HTTPS and your slashes and then 10.200.200.254, which is the IP address of my OpenSense firewall. 
you'll leave the port as 443 and then we're going to copy the API token that we just generated into the API token section over here and then you simply click add host to list and you'll see like it's done in my case the OpenSense platform and the host and then that token we created is now part of the list. While we in this uh, menu I just want to talk about the excluded hosts basically these are just any hosts on your part of your domain that you don't want to feed information into into Zen Armor. so you can just include them over here and then your log level I've just left mine as all but you can adjust this accordingly how you would like this Active Directory uh, agent to log information and then you'll see you just simply need to slide the service status over to running like mine is and you click save and then your active directory will start feeding information to zen armor about your users and your groups and so on if you are not using OpenSense with zen armor let's say you're using ubuntu or FreeBSD or one of the other supported operating systems. The process is slightly different. So firstly, you'll need to head over to your Zen console dashboard and then select the firewall that you're going to be using and then head over to settings and all the way at the bottom of the menu, there's API. You just need to make sure that it's enabled. Initially, this will be disabled. So you'll just click on this little button and you'll enable it. And then you need to generate a API key and we'll just give it any user. So in this case, I'll call mine AD user and we'll say generate. Then you need to copy this API key and keep note of the user that you set up. And we're going to head back to our Windows server. Okay, so we're back on the Windows server. Instead of selecting OpenSense as the platform, we're going to select other platform. And then the same applies here. You're going to use your host IP, which is going to be whatever whatever your firewall is configured, whatever Xenom is running on. That's going to be that IP address with the HTTPS in front of it. The port can just be left as 8090. And then we're going to copy that API token that we generated in Zen Console and place it over here. And then just below that is going to be the user that's tied to that API token. So that will be AD user like we created. And then simply you're just going to select add host to list and your information will immediately start being uploaded from the AD to Zen Armor so that you can stop using those users and groups that we've created in Active Directory. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to head back to our Zen console and we're going to go to our policies and inside our policies, I've created two new policies, one for staff and one for student. And then the default policy is just the default one. It's always there. And then if we select the student policy, you can see over here in the configuration, uh, if we scroll down to the bottom, I have selected that the IP and the networks, it's all traffic originating from my LAN, which is 10.200.200.0 slash 24. And the group that we're targeting in this case is the students group, which is the one that we created in Active Directory. Just a note with this, this uses and logic to match all of these particular criteria. So you need to make sure when you set this up, that it, it, that it uses and logic. So in this case, it needs to be coming from the 10.200.200.0 network and the group needs to be the students group in order for this to qualify. Then if we head over to our app controls, just for the sake of this demo, I've decided to block social networking websites just to show you how it works. So we'll scroll down under app controls and then I've simply selected the the little sliding button over here to block all of the social networks that Zenom is aware of. There's over 148 different ones in here which are going to be blocked. And then we head over to web controls and the same applies over here. So we can block any web traffic heading to those social networks. So basically in 30 seconds, I have blocked all of those different traffic types for, for the student group very easily. 
Okay, and then basically the staff group, not to waste too much time with this, but it's it's been set up pretty much the same as the student group where I am targeting all the IP addresses on my LAN. And in this case, the group is now just the staff group. So just to show you all these policies that I've created and how they actually work, I've logged in with the student one user account on our lab.local domain. And this machine is a Windows 11 machine that's been joined up obviously to that domain. And we're gonna open up our browser. And then let's try and navigate, for example, to uh, facebook.com. And then you'll see immediately that Zenom has intercepted that traffic and it's put out a block message that we can see. Uh, and then it also gives us a reason of your social network category access. If we look at some of the details, we can see that this is obviously the client IP of this machine and where the destination IP or the remote IP that it's trying to access. And the user has been prevented access from that particular social networking site. Uh, we can try it with another one like twitter.com. And it's the same result that we have with that one as well. So this is just a very easy and quick way without using any proxies or block lists or any of those things that require a lot of maintenance and a lot of setup time to prevent certain users and groups by leveraging our Active Directory, our existing Active Directory, with Zen Armor integration to block and prevent the flow of traffic as we need it on our network. So that's all that I want to show you guys today. You should have a pretty good idea now of how we can leverage our existing Active Directory users and groups through integration with Zen Armor to control content and traffic through our network very easily without having to set up proxies or maintain any block lists following any of those tedious processes. If you found this content useful and you've enjoyed it, please consider giving me a like and subscribing to my channel. Any support that I get is much appreciated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers for now.